Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be presenting about feminism and care ethics. So what exactly is it? Feminism refers to the ideology of advocating equality for all genders in various contexts. And although it's quite an ambiguous phenomenon where people define it differently, the expected goal remains the same, which is to bring upon equal opportunities for every gender. Generally, more moral decisions are thought to be a result of logical and rational thinking with emphasis on common and fair rules. And care ethics in comparison justifies emotions such as compassion to be moral when it comes to decision making. As a feminist approach to ethics that claims moral theories as male dominant and challenging to a degree where values are disregarded or overlooked and are culturally linked to females or stereotypically defined feminine roles. In more generic terms, care ethics prioritizes the nurturing of people close to us in communities, making it our highest moral obligation. It's not about what should I do, it's always about what should be done to nurture the connections closest to us. However, in a business context, this ethics aims to reevaluate decisions in a man manner to understand how it may affect the people we're close to rather in terms of strict rules and regulations. When it comes to a patriarchal framework, it's considered a feminine ethic and one of resistance towards patriarchal injustices. This theory proposes that as humans, we're innately receptive re relational beings, and one of our common traits is interdependence. It's also said to be fundamental for human survival and the attainment of a globalized society. So now to visualize a dilemma, there's a flaming car wreck involving your sibling and a Nobel Prize winning medical scientist, and you have the strength to only rescue one of the two. So which one should you save? As a strict utilitarian, someone believing we should always act to bring the greatest good to the greatest number would go for the scientist that would likely lead to producing future medical breakthroughs and in turn saving many others. But how many of us would actually really do that? Wouldn't you rather go for your own sibling rather than a scientist you've never met? And if the answer is yes, an ethics of care provides a way of understanding and justifying the impulse, which is before anything else, to protect those bound to us. This ethical theory does not urge the person expressing care to be selfless as it recognizes that an individual can only look after someone else and their needs once they've taken care of themselves first. For instance, try and recall the instructions provided by flight attendants about sorting out your oxygen mask for yourself first before helping others in cases of emergencies. This ethics can propose that there's an important biological difference between females and males, which refers to the potential of females to conceive and carry children. And this has social cultural consequences, such as the responsibility to exert care for another being that's highly dependent on females in more ways than one for survival. This dependency leads to a special relationship being established between a mother and child, which will always differ from one between a father and child. And so these differences have proven to have an effect on caringness. Additionally, Jack Ma, the co-founder of Alibaba stated that as for his experience and data collected at, at the company, women as customers and as employees tend to care more. Although it's the 21st century, price discrimination and gender inequality still as evident in business practices where women often have to pay more than men, for, men do for similar products with identical use. In a 2015 study, the findings reveal that females pay an approximate of 2,191 USD more than males do. For instance, if you look at the company Big that released pens for her in stereotypical colors considered to be feminine colors to target the female audience, it eventually had to be discontinued because of the backlash received. And price discrimination led to the creation of the term pink tax, where females are subjected to paying more simply because products are being produced in colors that are subjectively considered feminine, such as the color pink. For, for example, you can see on the screen that the women's razors are an average of 11% more expensive than men's, even though they have the exact same purpose. In an evolving world where equality is becoming more important, companies could use strategies such as developing unisex products to prevent any sort of discrimination in price or other aspects. For instance, The Ordinary, which is a famous skincare company, has developed skincare products which are gender neutral and caters to every need without emphasizing the differences in genders. And nearly 40% of young adults have displayed interest in unisex skincare products. 
Additionally, promoting equality to seize the gender gap could be an established strategic business goal, just like any other objective. It was also declared that inclusive companies would make improved decision making about 87% of the time, and it also indicated that better profits would be made in the long run. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.